Another thing that's happening is what is called the NAFTA superhighway. This is, this is a massive, and now I've heard anywhere from two football fields wide to four football fields wide, a truck highway, a car highway, railway and pipelines from Mexico through the center of the United States and branching off um, to hook up with pipelines from Canada down into the U.S., basically to supply the United States with goods and with, uh, and with energy, um, and possibly bulk water um, if, uh, if that ever um, gets off the wish list and into reality. And of course, um, there was a story in the CBC last year, and again, often these stories, you hear them for one day, they don't show, anywhere, they don't show up anywhere else, and you begin to wonder whether you just heard them or had a nightmare. <laughs> and one was, this one was how the FBI is now fully integrated into the police in, in Canada. There are four and I forget the actual name, it's a, it's a uh, sort of coordination committee. There's one in uh, Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver. And they, uh, they had, um, before last year, had I incorporated the RCMP, CSIS, provincial police, where there are provincial police and local, uh, and local police. Well, no, I guess not local police, provincial police. Um, but now the FBI is fully a part of this, of, the, of these coordination committees. And uh, at the same time that Canada is making the statement that, you know, well, we're, we're not going to send information to the United States anymore, so the Maharar uh, situation will never reoccur. Well, they don't have to send it to the United States anymore. The FBI is sitting in on the meetings where these things are discussed and documents are passed around. So the FBI is essentially sitting in on all relevant security meetings that take place in Canada. Um, Tilma, of course. Um, you've all heard of Tilma, I expect, by now. Tilma is a fundamental part of deep integration. The reason for that is, uh, and I, I'm very, I mean, I, I would bet money if I ever thought that we'd ever find out the truth of this, but my, I'm almost certain that the federal government had its hand in this, because when they're, when they're doing the harmonization of regulations between the U.S. and Canada, Ottawa can't deliver on deregulation, because most regulation in Canada is actually provincial and municipal. And so in order for Ottawa to pledge to the United States that it's going to harmonize and, and, and integrate into, uh, into the U.S., it has to be able to deliver provincial and municipal deregulation, and that's what Tilma is all about. So he went to the two most right-wing governments in Canada to sign Tilma, and then both BC and Alberta, of course, have been trying to peddle this agreement uh, to other provinces. With no success so far, but it's extremely scary. Um, and of course, now these are, these are just, the, in some ways, the formal parts of deep integration and, and the Security and Prosperity Partnership. And, in a, and as I referred to earlier, I mean, we've already seen that we are uh, harmonizing our foreign policy uh, and certainly harmonizing our defense policy, um, in integrating it into the U.S., uh, and expanding, um, uh, expanding NORAD to in include um, uh, uh, Navy, uh, Air Force, and Army. Uh, and our defense policy, of course, once the increases in military spending that both Martin and Harper implemented come into play, we will be spending uh, a bigger percentage of GDP on the military than at any time during the Cold War. And most of this spending, if you look at the kind of spending that we're doing, is for war fighting and not peacekeeping. So this is designed for some other operation like Afghanistan, a quick response, a preemptive, another sort of preemptive war in the nature of the, the attack on, on Iraq. Now, what's the, the current situation with um, the deep integration? Uh, initiative. There's a number of NGOs. Um, the CCPA has done a lot of studies on this. The Council of Canadians, the CCPA, and the, and the Canadian Labour Congress held a teach-in in Ottawa recently with 700 people attended. It was extremely successful. I wasn't able to make it, but I've heard uh, that it was extremely good. And a lot of NGOs and unions were simply not 
up to speed on this, and I think that that teach-in really made a difference, and we'll see in the fall maybe the, the payoff of, of that big teach-in. So just a, a, a last few comments on, on, um, on where we might focus uh, and how to get a handle on deep integration. Part of the problem is that it is so large and such a hydra-headed monster, it's very difficult for people to get a handle on. Uh, in fact, I mean, it's, it's much like the MAI. When you tell people about it, their first response is disbelief. Uh, and so that's a tough, that's a tough one. Uh, how, do you, how do you convince people that this is real and that it really is happening? One of the ways of doing that, of course, is to, is to leverage those issues that we know Canadians already care about. Certainly one of them is the environment and global warming and the connection of that issue to the tar sands, which of course is seen by the U.S. as their, their solution to energy security. Um, a friendly government willing to give all its oil up uh, without, uh, without question. Uh, and so the two issues of energy security and Kyoto are very much tied. Uh, and, and as you know, Canadians are now um, very much uh, on side in terms of seeing the environment as a major issue. And it, at times it, it even has, uh, has temporarily passed Medicare, which is amazing. Um, Certainly, the, uh, the militarization of, of Canadian culture is another issue. Um, Canadians, um, although they're conflicted in terms of supporting our troops, they are clearly against the war in Afghanistan and believe that it is a, 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 an, unwinnable, uh, an unwinnable war and, one, um, and that we are in a country where people do not want us to be. So those two, those two issues are certainly fundamental parts of deep integration and our issues that Canadians care about. And part of what we need to do, I think, is that every time we talk about those issues, that we talk about them in the context of deep integration so that people gradually begin to understand that these are just two dimensions of a much broader and more fundamental effort to integrate Canada into the U.S. If you look at, all, if you look at the polls and the focus groups about Canadian values, you'd be very encouraged. In fact, over the last um, 10 years, and specifically over the last six years when Bush has been in power, um, Canadians' values have actually become more progressive, and their, their views about what, is, what government should do have actually become more progressive. What the right has succeeded in doing in this country is lowering people's expectations so that even though people's values are progressive, their expectations that those values will find their way into public policy have been hammered back, and it's our job to increase people's expectations of what is possible. Thank you.